Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name, sorry, jumping the head. This is episode six, episode number six hundred thirty-eight, and the title today is "You Don't Know What You've Got Until It's Gone." Um, actually, quoting from a song title, but I'm going to get into that in a second. Before I talk about this topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am. Sorry, my ears are popping. It's been going all up today. Um, of course, you wouldn't know what that is. That sounds like to you because you're not in my head. <laughs> My, my, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and life and love attraction expert. I help strong and... Uh, sorry, excuse me, boy. Let me rewind a bit. I'm, I'm noticing myself being a little bit out of whack and I know what's going on, so let me start over a bit. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and love attraction expert. Actually, relationship attraction expert and help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is why I do what I do, and also what inspired these talks several two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at topic number 638, or, or episode 638. And the topic today is you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And I'm using an example in my own immediate experience to speak to something deeper about the area of relationship particularly, um, but not the way you think. I suspect. First of all, um, if you're watching my broadcast, you know I've gone through a sort of dip in my physical health. I had a head cold that is on the way out, but definitely um, grateful because yesterday was a, was a painful day, but today's a lot better. But I'm not back to full health yet. And I'm just also very aware of the physical ailments and, and, and things I'm challenged by today as I'm getting back on my feet. But feeling somewhat weakened, partly because I haven't eaten a lot and just go and had not been able to do much, and so I'm now very aware of how I've taken my average normal physical health for granted because I hadn't felt different from that. And this is the thing that I know we fall into the trap of: we run along with life being all very comfortable, the same, and then something changes on that, and it goes somewhere different or or down or or um, something traumatic happens or challenging happens. In my experience, having gone through and been healthy for a long time. I haven't had a head cold in, in ages. It's been, been almost a year at least since the last time. Anyway, so I had the head cold and suddenly my health went, went down for a bit. And it was in that time yesterday and today in particular when I was reflecting back on just how much I'd taken my regular health for granted. And it's like I didn't know what I've got until it was gone, basically. Not, not gone badly, but just, just being knocked out of whack somewhat from my normal vital health, for the sake, for the sake of argument. Now, what the hell does that have to do with relationships, you might be wondering. Well, I want to speak to two sides of this, because for some people, they... Okay, how do I don't approach this one? Hmm. Well, first of all, the obvious one is that you may feel like you left a relationship when you shouldn't have done, that you didn't realize how good it was until you don't have it anymore. That may or may not be true. The challenge with relationships which is the challenge with our memory of relationships, is we've got a bad habit of painting over the bad, the bad parts, the painful parts, with the feelings of goodness and stuff that happened. So, excuse me, our perspective of our relationships goes through a filter of everything's okay, everything's fine. But the truth is for many of us, once we're out of a relationship, it's a lot of freedom. And yes, we'll know what, it, we, know what we had when it's gone, but also we don't always see it clearly. So one of the things I'm talking about here is it's, it's, it's I de uh, hang on, hang on, say this. It is something that is particularly important that we see reality clearly, meaning that when we look back at our past relationships, which may have ended badly, and particularly if we got screwed over in a relationship, and that means as we lost out, we were broken up with, we were dumped. We might think, oh, that relationship is so wonderful. Why did I get dumped? If you look through clear lenses, these two, and the internal memory re review system called your brain, if you look through with look through with those things from a place of clarity and and um, impersonality, like looking through clearly and neutrally, you might discover that that relationship wasn't as good as you thought it was, that it wasn't as pretty, perfect, smooth, simple, elegant, wonderful as you thought it was. There may have been glimpses of that. It might have been a lot more traumatic than you realize when you look back on it because you've been putting all the rose-tinted decorations around it to make it look good. If that's the case, being single is a good thing. Now, I want to speak to the other side first and I'll go deeper into the, both of these. 
for some people, being in a relationship is a default situation. Different people, back, 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 back to back to back to back, but in a relationship with different people all the time, because being single is something that they don't want to be. But the thing is, for a lot of people, being in a relationship, it's almost an addiction, and it comes from a place of being afraid to be comfortable with themselves. And the thing is that for some people, being in a relationship is almost looking back at their single life going, I miss being single, because there's a level of freedom, of single focus, as you can do whatever you want, and all these other components of being um, single, that when you're in a relationship, you might feel like you have to give up. And to speak to that one slightly, the challenge with relationships is we think there's rules we've got to play by. And there are agreements, yes, but rules are different. But, agree but rules about where you can't have freedom is an illusion. If you define your relationship the way you want it to, and I mean taking out of your framework of the defaults, where you want to create freedom for yourself and your partner in the relationship to do whatever you want, whatever the boundaries are for that. And I did talk about monogamy and polyamory a while back uh, last week, so uh, no, early this week. So I'm not saying that's, separate, that's something on the table. I'm talking about, though, that you have the freedom to go away for the weekend, to go camping, or you have the freedom to uh, have a girl's, girl's night with a girl's day at the spa. For a lot of people in a relationship, they don't think they can have those things because they've got to be so focused on their partnership. But the truth is that if you really are honoring who you are and honoring yourself, you will choose things that honor you and make you a better partner. So what I'm saying from both perspectives is that we don't always see things clearly and we don't always ask questions that can help us see more clearly. Because the other part also in a relationship is that we think our partner, we think things about our partner or think what we think what our partner's views are without actually asking and finding out. And that's a dance that we don't need to play. There's an opportunity to really discover and explore what you want in a relationship when you ask your partner and share with your partner what you want. When you ask your partner what they want and what you want to create together. So when you're in a relationship, you have a relationship that's additive to the two of you. The thing about relationship in my book, not just my own physical book, but in my internal value system, is relationships Actually, it is in my physical book, yes. My physical book, by the way, is 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. I'll put the link in the comments. Now, I didn't plan to do a blog, but got a blog anyway. But being in a relationship with somebody is a great chance to expand and explore who you are. Because a relationship is greater than the sum of the parts. The two of you together create and explore something bigger than the two of you individually. That's the power of a relationship. However, that only really happens if you both are willing to inquire and expand your views of what's possible beyond your own individual selection, your own individual viewpoints. And that's when you start seeing there's a different way of being in a relationship that's much more um, collaborative and, and joyful in simple terms. So I'm just going to tie that back in together. I went off on a tangent then. Let's even go back to where I was talking about before that fits. So So being in a relationship, honoring who you are, honoring your own choices, and honoring your partner's choices is a powerful place to expand your relationship beyond what it's comfortable with. Because the thing is, the rules we've been playing under for a lot of people, for a lot of people over the years is relationship is a very confining space. And when we're in a relationship, we make assumptions about ourselves, assumptions about our partners, and don't believe we can expand beyond that to have what we really want. And that, unfortunately, is a... Um, It's an illusion. It's false. It's not true. The truth of what's possible, the power of what you can have, is so much bigger than what you believe. And when you start seeing what's open, what possibilities open to, what you're open to, say so try one again, is a really profound, powerful way of being. And for me to real, to speak to this from the point of view of ownership, I know that I've created a life for myself that is totally um, focused around what I do and where I go. So anybody I'm going to date. And I've become clear about this. Any any woman I want to date has to either fit into that, work with it, and certainly understand it, or there's no way to be together. That simple. The the truth for me so clearly is that we, especially when we're doing work that we value and what we're about, is so powerful, so profound, so important that if we meet somebody you want to be in a relationship, we can't give one up for the other. It cannot work that way. And this is actually a lesson I learned a long time ago, and it's become clear for me over the years. So for me, what I'm really clear about is what I'm about in my life can only work with a relationship that complements that. 
Not an interesting place to get to. Okay. Um, I think that's it, actually. I want to get something out. I guess that was the delivery. So my point, my point, uh, my my sum to summarize to bring it down to a, a hone it to a um, um, conclusion. Sometimes we don't know how good it is when we're in the moment, whether you're single or in a relationship. And it's important sometimes to value what we have and who we are. Let me rephrase that. It's not sometimes, it's always. To, write, to value who we are and what we have. Because if we forget that, we may, di may discover too late how good it's been. So get present to your own life, get present to what's going on in your life, whether you're in a relationship or you're single. And start to make a list, if you wish, of what it is that you value about your life, in partnership or single. That what you really appreciate and value, what you have, what you're creating, what you're about, all these different things. Now you might discover, as I mentioned at the beginning, that you might be realizing you gave some things up to be in that place, in which case that's going to come out and you'll figure that out for yourself. Alternatively, what you might discover is a lot more value in who you are and what you're about. And that's a good thing, because it starts to raise your own standards and creates more value in your life. And ultimately that for me is a powerful place to move from and where you want to go toward is creating more value in your life and being more valuable as a person in your life. I hope this made some sense. This was an interesting circuitous path that I was going through, but I had to talk about it. And as much as I'm feeling past the midpoint of this, this head cold, I'm definitely feeling a bit not sideways. So I think my talks have been a little bit wonky the last couple of days. So it's been of help. A um, couple of quick things, because I'm going to wrap up and get off this now, because it's funny, I've not focused this much in, in a couple of days, because it's, so it's interesting to sort of put myself into a place of focus. And that's an interesting place too. I appreciate you being with me and thanks for watching. Um, replays, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. I then put them onto replays onto my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. Um, also onto my YouTube channel, which is also called Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist in there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live. And on iTunes, I have a podcast called Messages from the Masculine. You can subscribe to that and also download the audios. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. And if it made any sense to you, I'd appreciate leaving me know that too, because I wasn't sure myself. And um, I trust I'll be a little bit clearer tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me. And I'll see you again tomorrow. I'll put the link in the comments for my, uh, for my book, because I do talk about this in my book to a degree. And there's, 50 other there's 49 other principles in there too. And uh, with that, thank you for watching. Take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow. And uh, respect yourself. Bye.